Welcome back, Bulldogs. My name's Gabe. And my name is Jack. And welcome back to Two Minute Warning, Double Edition. This episode, we'll be talking and predicting the last two weeks of the college football regular season and discussing the Lions Thanksgiving matchup. Let's get started on the Lions. On Thanksgiving, it'll be the Lions against the Bears of Chicago. What are your views on the season? Well, the Lions have had many missed opportunities this season, but with Matthew Stafford returning, it could be a huge boost for the Detroit offense. I do believe they would dominate against the Bears because it was such a close game November 10th. Now for the Lions offense, I believe Marvin Jones will finish at least one touchdown. Kenny Galladay will also have big plays down the stretch. On the other hand, the Lions game, as usual, will be non-existent due to the fact of the big fellow on the line, Cleo Mack. Mm -hmm. In the end, the Lions will come out with power and start off shooting, tossing up big plays to Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay, and the Lions will end up winning, 24 to 14. You've been sighing and shaking your head the entire time. Please enlighten me with your thoughts on the matter. Well, to be honest with you, the Lions already lost their season. They let a rookie quarterback in the first game of the season come all the way back, and they let Patrick Mahomes run it up the middle on fourth and eight. They traded Quandre Diggs, and they threw it to a tight end on fourth and one against the Raiders. And they also choked against the Bears already this season. So they have no chance to make the playoffs. And if they do, they'll probably lose the wild card. So I believe that they need to get a good position in a good position for a good first round player, which might end up being a quarterback depending on Stafford. They want to rebuild, and I feel they have a good team already, but it's the same old Lions during the season. I do think that with Stafford being out, it will be a challenge for the Lions, but I've got the Bears winning 31-17. Wow. You're speaking like an average Lions fan. People like you give up when they see a loss. Give the team the chance. They've been absolutely dominated and screwed over by the refs. Have you not watched any football this season? They had a chance September 8th, 2019 against the Cardinals. Yes, I have watched all their games, and yes, they've been screwed over by the, uh, the refs. It happens every year. It's just the coaching decisions sometimes that lead to defeat. That's what I don't understand. <sighs> well, this could take hours to debate, so due to time, I'm going to postpone this one. Let's change this into the main topic, college football. Whatever, Jack. Let's move on to what happened during the Michigan-Michigan State game. The Wolverines eventually pulled away with a much-needed victory against the Michigan State Spartans, with the final score being 44-10. The Wolverines came out to drive to win. When your quarterback has a monster first half, it really sets the tone going into the locker room. They had a 17-7 lead going into halftime, and they didn't let up either, having huge defensive stops that transitioned into offense. Shea Patterson, no-brainer, player of the game with 384 passing yards and four touchdowns, no turnovers. Michigan dominated the Spartans. Yeah, Michigan really dominated this year. It's sad for us Michigan fans to realize that this is the first time since 2007 that Michigan has won back-to-back -back games against the Spartans. Harrison also broke Tom Brady's Michigan record for the most passing yards versus MSU. Do you think they have a shot versus Ohio? <sighs> they really need Shea Patterson to be a leader and have the same game that he had against Michigan State. He has to have no turnovers. Turnovers has been huge for him this season. He has to come out strong and lead this team to a victory. But in the end, if they play some good defense, I think they'll come out with the win. I think they have a chance. Uh, think about it. The last four years under Harbaugh, they've started out really good, but towards then they tend to choke. Uh, this year it's the opposite, and the game is in Ann Arbor. I think Michigan wins on the last drive, led by Zach Charbonnet, who has been really good lately. Black guys will be knocked out of the playoffs. Watch. Wow, that's a shocking take. Let's move to this week in college football. We are going to have a whole lot of college football in this episode because we will be covering two weeks of college football due to the fact of Thanksgiving break coming up. Sounds good to me, Gabe. Let's get right into it. Let's start with some big predictions. We're coming up on the end of the season. Any playoff predictions or Heisman winners, you think? I really like Joe Burrow for Heisman. He's the candidate to beat. Every week he puts up impressive numbers. He's been in Alabama at Tuscaloosa. Who's done that? He's undefeated, and his stats are really good. 3,687 passing yards, 38 passing, touching, passing touchdowns, and six interceptions. He has a 78.6% completion percentage. He became a Heisman on the fake play on himself against Alabama, in my opinion. Joe Burrow and LSU are, in my opinion, national champions this year. Yeah, it's a really bold prediction. Personally, however, I do believe Jalen Hurts from Oklahoma will win the Heisman this year. The Sooners are 9-1 due to the fact of this man. He has a total of 3,039 passing yards, 28 touchdown passes, and only five interceptions. That comes out to a 73% completion percentage, creating the highest passer rating in the entire FBS. Not only does he do it in the air, but he also has 15 rushing touchdowns. That's the highest rushing touchdowns out of any quarterback, and only two less than the running back who is also in the Heisman race, Jonathan Taylor. Not only does he put up the stats, 
but he's the leader for the Sooners team. Hence the comeback win against Baylor. For all these reasons, it's a no-brainer. Jalen Hurst is by far the Heisman winner. That's an okay prediction. Look at the numbers, though. Joe is better. Jalen also wouldn't do what Joe did during Bama game, and I don't understand what he, how he'd come back against Alabama at Tuscaloosa either. So, especially in a, if it was a rivalry game. Joe is a leader on the field with a good offense, and that's what I think it takes to be a national champion. Debatable. Moving on to the playoff predictions. And number four, I got the Oklahoma Sooners. I think the Sooners are going to finish strong and make a statement win versus Oklahoma State. At number three, I got the Ohio State Buckeyes. The Buckeyes have had a great season. However, if they lose against the Wolverines, obviously going to drop out of the playoff race. Moving to number two are the Clemson Tigers. The Tigers are another great, have another great season. I definitely think they'll finish strong against South Carolina and create a concrete spot at number two. And finally, number one is LSU. LSU has arguably the best and most shocking season out of the entire FBS, creating a definite spot at number one. Wow, that's a good set of predictions. Well, whoever wins the SEC is gonna, gonna go to the playoffs no matter what. At the fourth spot, I have the Oregon Ducks. They should get in before Oklahoma. They are a good team, despite the loss to Auburn. They got a tough conference championship in the Pac-12 against most likely Utah. They'll win that. At three, I got Alabama. Georgia will lose in, to the, in the SEC title against LSU, and Alabama will jump in and take their spot. Uh, at two, I got Clemson. They are really complete with Trevor Lawrence, and they have no competition in their conference. They play South Carolina, and I think they'll win that game. Um, number one is definitely LSU. They've shown us that they are the best team, and they are undefeated right now, and nothing to say about that. They're number one. Agreed. LSU will definitely be number one. Wow, looks like it's time for the predictions. Let's move to week 13 of college football. Okay, Gabe, what's your thoughts on Penn State at Ohio State? Well, I guess Penn State will give Ohio a challenge, but I think Justin Fields will eventually come back and win. Um, let's move on to Michigan at Indiana. Final game of the regular season for the Wolverines before Ohio. How do you think they'll do? Oh, I definitely think they're going to carry that energy that they had against Michigan State, and they're going to come out and just smack Indiana. Moving on to Oregon at ASU, who do you got in this matchup? Uh, I think Oregon's going to come back. I got them in the top four, so I think they're going to come back, and I think ASU is going to give them a challenge, but I think, it's gonna, I think Oregon's going to come back. Uh, final game that we'll be assessing is Texas A&M at Georgia. Uh, your predictions on this one? I think I'll go with upset. Texas A&M going to beat Georgia. Georgia's not really having kind of a shaky season. They're, they're not really doing the greatest that they have in the past years. So I think Texas A&M definitely going to come out with the win. Well, next, let's move on to week 14 of college football. Alabama versus Auburn. Huge matchup. Who's coming out with the win? I really like Aub uh, Auburn in this one. Tua Tagadova suffered a season-ending injury in week 12, so I really think Auburn is ready to pounce on Mac Jones. He's only played one regular season game this year. Auburn's defense will dominate the Crimson Tide offense and come out with the win. Now moving on to the matchup of the week, Michigan versus Ohio State. Who's winning this rivalry game? Um, I'm pulling for Michigan. I really hope they win. Um, Harbaugh really needs to be on his A game, and I think Michigan's going to give Ohio State a real big challenge. I hope their defense comes up. they got to stop Justin Fields on the run. And I think the defense are, is just going to stop them in the end. I got Michigan. Wow, I really agree with you. I think defense is a huge part. Also, another part, Shea Patterson. He really has to have, have a monster game. Yeah. That's the end of our show. Tune in next time for news, highlights, and predictions. I'm Jack. Go Blue. And I'm Gabe. Also Go Blue. Signing off. Have a great break, Bulldogs. <laughs>